Lord, I pray that you'd fill me with your spirit. I pray that, Lord, you'd help me today to get out of your way. I pray that you'd work in our midst. I pray that you'd do what you, what you need to do. For I think of the words of the song, I am weakness, full of weakness. At thy sacred feet I bow, fill me with thy uh, divine presence. Come, O oh, come, and fill me now. And I pray that you would. Lord, I pray that you'd fill us today. I pray that you'd speak and have your way in our midst. I pray that you would impart into every Christian in this room a hunger and desire to know the Word of God. And to know, not just the Word of God, but to know Jesus. And I pray that you'd help those that maybe today are not sure of their standing as far as going to heaven or, or what's going to happen when they die, that they would come to the desire today to know you as their Savior. Bless, I pray, this message in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're leading up to this text. If you go back just a couple verses here, <clears throat> we're, we're thinking about how Paul is writing this letter to a church that he loves, a church he started 10 years previous, and uh, to people that he cares deeply about. He's not reproving or rebuking them. He's really just giving them some warning and some instruction. And what he starts doing in, verse, in chapter 3, verse 1, is to kind of say, hey, I want you to be aware and be careful about there's some people out there called Judaizers who are teaching that you have to obey Jewish law and you have to get circumcised in order to go to heaven. So they're teaching faith plus works in order to get to heaven. And that's just not the Bible way. It's faith only. It's Jesus only. It's only by, uh, by grace are you saved through faith. Not of your works. The, the, you can't work your way to heaven. It's only the, the, the payment that Jesus made for you. That's the only way to get to heaven is accepting him as your Savior. So be careful about that. And then he says, look, if, if anybody could work their way to heaven, if anybody could brag about how good they are, he said, I had a pretty good resume. Uh, I, I had a lot to brag about. I followed every law. I was a Pharisee. I was a Hebrew of the Hebrews. I was of the stock of Benjamin. Hey, I, 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 was, I was, you know, the most you could be. To try to earn your way to heaven. He said, but, but it wasn't good enough. That was my righteousness. And what I need is Christ's righteousness. And if you look at verse 7 8. He said, but, but what things were gained to me. Those are kind of lost for Christ. He said, all of that stuff didn't get me Jesus. So it was worth nothing. Verse 8. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss. For the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. The knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things. And do count them but dumb them. That I may win Christ. He's saying, hey, he's talking about salvation, that, 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 that his righteousness, his way of doing things, his, his trying to do the right thing doesn't get him to heaven. He needs Christ's righteousness because Jesus was perfect. And he died for our sins. And he wants to impute his righteousness upon our account. And that's what I want. And so now that he's gotten it, he goes into the next verse here. And he says, that I may know him. And the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of the suffering, be made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. So why is he saying this? What's Paul's purpose in life? You know, 